Welcome, strangers, to this edition of Documentary Insider, where we get to pick the brains of the people involved with these wonderful documentaries that we cover. Let me introduce everyone who's listening or watching on YouTube, our crew for this evening. I have, okay, so first I should say, earlier this year, documentary, we did a contest where one of our listeners uh, was to join our show for a documentary of their choice. The winner of that contest was none other than our Bryce Necker, who's off camera over there, uh, his sister, Abby Necker, who is here with us again today. So she won. She brought Mark Means along, and they chose the Rockumentary from 2008 called Anvil, the story of Anvil, that followed the Canadian heavy metal band Anvil. Abby, hi. Welcome hi. back to the show. Thank you. Yeah. Um, are you excited to be here again tonight? I know I made you drive, what, three hours from Grand two, Island? Two hours from two Grand hours. Island? Yeah. Um, which I totally forgot that you guys were that far away, so apologies, but it's worth it. I promise this is going to be worth it. Oh, yeah. um, tell me why you chose Anvil, the story of Anvil, for our for our original show. Yeah. Well, this is so cool to say it like in front of lips right here. Yeah. We haven't introduced him yet. I know. Oh, I know. I can't help alert. myself. He's just right there. <laughs> no, I loved the documentary when it first came out mm -hmm. and just kind of become a, an Anvil fan after that rooting for him. Yep. And then it got re-released um, back in 2022. Mm -hmm. And that was like on the forefront of my mind. So when I won the competition, it was like... Yes, this is the documentary <laughs> is I want to talk about. This is awesome. what we're doing. Very cool. Well, thanks for coming back for this uh, episode of Insider. Mark, welcome back, sir. Thanks. Good to be back. Yeah, well, we're, we're happy to have you. Um, for this episode of Insider, he is one of the co-founders, the guitarist, the lead vocalist, and the unrelenting hammer of hope and positivity. He is none other than Steve Lips Kudlo. <laughs> Hi, Lips. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the show, man. Thanks so much for being here. Um, we have become fans of Anvil. <laughs> um, I, I'll well, be... movie anyway. <laughs> no, 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 no. The band. The, 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 the film was a wonderful introduction to some of us. So um, we have a whole range of different generations in here. Um, and we're all musicians. We're all music lovers. And... Somehow, Anvil, more specifically, you and Rob's story that's shown into in the film has gained some true fans in this room and otherwise across different generations, which I think is a huge testament to your music and the work that you guys have put into this. Um, you, you're hitting everything from, you know, younger generations. Every walk of life. Every walk of life. Absolutely, it, it man. Every color, every age, every, it, it's yep. it, it's a complete plethora. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's 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 wonderful, and and I think that's that's great. And not every, you know, metal is kind of the genre of music that can do that. <laughs> I don't know if you would agree, but I think that of all of them, no, I totally agree. First of all, Anvil, Anvil, a, a lot of people try to figure out where and how and what it it, it fits into, and that's that's actually the part of the problem with with why things didn't work out because we came in between mm. hard rock and heavy metal yeah so and in fact our first album was called lips hard and heavy after my after my nickname okay okay uh -huh. and I, of course being the lead vocalist and lead guitar player it centered around me but what happened was when the record company signed the band they went they don't and right at that moment in 1981, all of a sudden it's uh, it's it's not hard rock. It's called heavy metal. Mm. You know, Motorhead had just started up. There were yep. a lot of the English, the British bands were starting to come through to North America, particularly particularly to the people who were hard rock fans. I mean, it wasn't it didn't become commercialized till a couple of years after. Right. Um, so we kind of fell between the cracks in the, in a certain sense because are they heavy metal or are they hard rock right 
Yeah. And, 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 and there are aspects, there are aspects, especially on the, especially on the first album, mm -hmm. you wouldn't really, it's stretching it to call it metal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Even in, in my opinion. Sure. Okay. Because, yeah. Um, we were still, still well connected to, uh, hard rock and, the, the, and to be quite honest, I I like that. That's mm -hmm. where I come from. I was born in 1956, mm -hmm. not 1966. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? And that's a big difference. Yeah, absolutely. And most of most of our audience were born in the mid 60s. Mm -hmm. So that's what that's what the difference is, you know. So it, it became very apparent to the record company that in order to to uh, to sort of market us to the right crowd, we got to do something about the name. Mm -hmm. So they had us change the name from, and you know, uh, Rob came up with the idea to call it Anvil. And of course the record company loved it because yeah. they're going anything that you call an inanimate object. Right. It, you can, <laughs> it is great for marketing. Um, yep. The other thing is, it's it doesn't heavy. get heavier than an anvil. <laughs> exactly. Right? It's heavy. <laughs> it's got to be an anvil. Right. I mean, it, 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 it happened at at sort of the the beginnings so it made it it made it quite logical and and, and to go that direction yeah so i love it uh, yeah although although i think lips would have been a great name for a band i think anvil lips is a better name for the 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 lead singer the and the guitar player and anvil just fits perfectly for for the band that you guys kind of morphed into so i love it um so this documentary actually gained a lot of acclaim. So Rotten Tomatoes, to remind our listeners, we went over this in our in their main show, but Rotten Tomatoes gives the documentary about you guys a 98% score, which is huge. Like there's not a whole lot of films out there that have that that good of a score. You guys won best no, there's doc. There's not very many films. There's not very no. many films that get released twice. <laughs> True. Right. You're right. You're absolutely right. Um, you won best, best documentary in 2009 at the Evening Standard British Film Awards in London. Uh, you won best documentary in uh, 2012, I believe, for Independent Spirit Awards in LA. Uh, won an Emmy for Outstanding Arts and Culture Programming. The Times called it possibly the greatest film made about rock and roll, which I tend to agree with. And what I really like, so you guys are one of two different documentaries that we either have or will be covering that made the top three. So you guys are number three in the best music documentaries of twenty of the 21st century, according to IndieWire which is huge. <laughs> I, I love that. And that's all the storytelling, man. That's all your guys' story. And I hope that you are really proud of the film. And I hope that you are really proud of Anvil because without Anvil and the music and the work that you guys put in to playing that, this film would, would be nothing, <laughs> you know? So I hope well, you're really- I mean, there's, there's so, ma so many different uh, ingredients to the reasons that it became what it is. Mm -hmm. And where do I even begin? Yeah, I guess the place to begin would be at the beginning to explain. the The director was a fifteen year old kid knocking mm -hmm. at the door of a, a gig that we did at the Marquee Club in London, England, in right. nineteen eighty three. Yeah, yeah, you, <laughs> you, you that's can't. Where the story actually really began. Yeah, and you can't write and, that. That's something that that's. That's chemistry, you know. That's that I mean. you know, there's a lot of a lot of people in the music industry going. They could have done it with every any band. Oh uh, bullshit! No, it <laughs> bullshit. Work like that. It's not. It it just doesn't work like that. It's not the way right. life is. You know this this is this is uh, it's it's remarkable, really. Mm -hmm. um, now to this little fifteen year old, he's coming into a uh, comes into our our change room. And, you know, we're in our mid twenties <laughs> and to us, it's, look at it. It's, it's our, an English fan. You know? <laughs> yeah. You're excited you know, about that. Friend, it's the first time ever, ever being out of the country uh, and playing somewhere. And, and here's a kid who knows every note of what we've been doing. I love that. So man. It was a, a huge, a huge remarkable thing to the point where, you know, it's like, Hey, 
let's let's go out tomorrow afternoon and go i'll show you around london yep right so we go out with we go out with sasha and go and see all the sites and and he shows us around london and he he's a very spectacular kind of of person yeah like even at a, as a as a 15 year old mm -hmm. like what would a 25 year old have in common but <laughs> the mu the music music it's everything and man was, well you know at this point listen i've right right now even to today mm -hmm. i've got we've got two 21 year olds being our road crew <laughs> and and it's it's astonishing because these guys know as much about rock music rock music mm -hmm. as we do right so when they listen to anvil they can hear where our influences come from and that's why they love the band yeah yeah they were not ignorant like and they went back and they listened to, you know all the 10 years after the Jimi hendrix the the the, the you know eric yeah. burden and the animals listen to all the rock music that i grew up with right mm -hmm. You know, you know what I'm saying, but they, but they, they were, they weren't even in the a, a, a sparkle in their dad's eye yet. <laughs> right. No, but, that that's so it, it, it's quite quite remarkable. Yeah. So uh, Sasha was very very in tune with what we were doing, and that really impressed us. Mm -hmm. So in in what what happened was, of course, from this this meeting, um, we started. We introduced them to all. He started hanging out with us while we were in England, and we introduced them to all kinds of rock stars and people <laughs> that were in and around in the business. God, to be a fifteen-year-old and, and and doing that. Can yeah, you imagine that? Like, I would have melted. <laughs> yeah, huge eye opener for him. Like, I bet uh, one of the, one of the people, just as an example, was the Queen's cousin. <laughs> and you're going, what Queen's wow. cousin? Yeah, the Queen's cousin. We were at the Donington Festival in uh -huh. 19, the same time that we met Sasha, we met Sir Lord Philip Harvey, hmm. right? That's right. the Queen's cousin. This guy was a metalhead like you've never met. Him. <laughs> I You're love like, that. I, God, that's so okay. cool. <laughs> You know, he's in his forties and we're in our twenties. And this guy's, this guy's like the coolest guy. We, we finished the festival and we see this guy kind of leaning against the safari van. Uh -huh. And it was literally a safari van with everything from the, the camouflage and like, he just yeah. drove out of Africa with this thing. <laughs> That's he's awesome. Like a hippie, right? This guy's like a, fr uh, like, like what you would call a hippie. Mm -hmm. especially from the era that i come from sure but of course the, the his denim jacket all covered with all the all the the, the patches, the patches and, yeah and, as he would say some serious denim <laughs> you know <laughs> i mean this guy was a real character yeah um he was friends with every every i mean he was he was the guy that last saw Jimi hendrix alive wow holy uh, shit, I mean, man uh, these are things I I didn't realize till later. Sure. Right. Yeah. I knew that I knew that Jimi Hendrix's girlfriend was his friend, but I didn't mm -hmm. realize that th that connection. That's they were with Philip Harvey. Him and his girlfriend were with Philip Harvey the night he went to sleep and died. Man, wow! I didn't, I, how am I going to know that? But no, I'm just yeah. saying that this is just a remarkable a remarkable person. Absolutely. And he'd have all the rock stars over to his over to his place near Baker Street. <laughs> I know that's it's, it's interesting, and yeah. I always remember the address because or the name of the street because Sherlock of Holmes. the, the, the uh, Rafferty's song. Mm. You know the, mm -hmm. the da, 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 that yeah. song. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, that's really Baker cool, man. Street, right? Yep. Um, yeah. So it from that introduction of course now you know sasha after we left england sasha was going over to philip's place and hanging out mm -hmm. and he's sitting there one one afternoon and this guy with a straw hat comes in and he lights up a big joint and they're sitting there at the kitchen table and he takes this hat off and it's jimmy page holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> that's fucking awesome so, i mean it, it just some of the stuff uh, that uh, that sasha it, uh, actually, it, it's so magical. 
another aspect, another thing that had happened to Sasha, mm-hmm. even just before he had met us, his mother was a is a, was a concert pianist and was working on worked in a in a in a in a play that was going on in in London, and Dustin Hoffman came home for lunch, a cup of tea with his mother, and Sasha comes into the into the <laughs> kitchen, and there's Dustin Hoffman sitting wow. in the kitchen with his mom having a cup of tea. Um, wow, man! He had done he had done some kind of essay or something, and mm-hmm. he had he had. Uh, Dustin read it and and mark it and give his his uh, sure. his two cents on it. Well, I mean, I can, I'll, I'll explain how the, the, this stuff comes together as we go. But <laughs> I'm tracking, um, man. I like it. Thank it, you. It, it's just phenomenal stuff. You're going what what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know. Um, so th- this was incredible. So, but we've become pretty good friends. And Sasha Sasha decides he's going to come to Toronto because that's where his mother came from. Mm -hmm. And he had his, his uncles living here and he decided to come visit. And the next thing I know, there's Sasha at my door. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. Yeah. So I go in, well, how long are you around? He goes, I'm around for a few weeks. I said, okay, well, we're going to Quebec Sweet to do some shows. And he, you want to come with? He said, "Yeah." And he Why would I say roadie. no to that? <laughs> yeah, and it's like he's got a chance to go on the road with his favorite band. Yeah. So all these, all these personal exchanges mm-hmm. and hanging with us had a huge, huge, massive effect on this on him. Right. To the point, there's good and bad. Mm-hmm. There's good and bad because he went on a bad in a bad direction in yeah. in life with drugs and all kinds of shit, oh, drinking, yikes. smoking, you name it. Sure. Um, and we've parted ways yeah. as a result of that. We saw it going there and we just yeah. said, I don't, we don't want to be responsible. We don't whatever. Yeah. See you later. <laughs> yeah. And it was about 25 years, maybe 30 years later, I get in. We always wondered whatever happened to him. And mm-hmm. we're always thinking maybe we should go visit his uncle Marty and ask, mm-hmm. <laughs> but we just, you're just going, well, what would that be like? You know, yeah. we know his uncle, but <laughs> why didn't we, why aren't we in touch with this guy? Right. So we never really went that, that way, but all of a sudden I get an email and it's Sasha and he's going, what's up, man? I <laughs> realized that you recorded all these albums. Wow. Where are you? What are you doing? And so I answer the email. I, we, we exchange phone numbers and he calls me, he goes, listen, I'm going to have you come down to Los Angeles to come visit me. I go, well, that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> Where, <laughs> For what? <laughs> he goes, well, he's going, well, don't worry about money. I'll, 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 I'm going to sort you. I'm going to send you a, a airline tickets give me your address and i'll wow. have them there tomorrow and i'm thinking yeah right <laughs> and i'm thinking tea bag tea bag's gonna pay my way to it to, to la yeah, yeah. right <laughs> i still didn't believe that what was going on and no idea of what had become of him or right. any of the history so the next day the the doorbell rings and there's fedex and the guy hands me an envelope. I open it up. It's got the tickets to go to L.A. Hell yeah. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> He's serious, man. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to L.A. this weekend. <laughs> so I land in at LAX. I get, out of the, I get out on the platform, and I take a look. And here's Sasha, the same guy. He looks exactly the same, but an adult version of the, of the, the 15 year old kid you, you guys went through yeah, London with. Yeah. You're, he's a lot skinnier as a kid. And of course, sure. Uh, it, 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 it's just an adult version of the same guy. And I, uh-huh. I immediately go, Holy shit. We get in the, <laughs> in the car and we immediately just start talking. Like we just picked up where we left off Wow, kind of thing. And yep. it's like, well, I, what kind of, I'm looking, I'm getting in a car and I'm going, what the fuck? What kind of car is this? He's going, <laughs> he's going it was Sean Connery's car. What the fuck, so, man? <laughs> yeah, he's, driving, he's driving Sean a, a car that Sean Connery owned. It was a, oh, a, man, a Jaguar weird. convertible. So it's like, holy shit, man. Like, 
what's yeah. what did you what, what have you, you been doing? Yeah, <laughs> doing that. You're paying my way. You're driving a Jaguar. What what are you doing? Right. right? And he goes, I'm a screenwriter. So I go, okay. He goes, you know, the movie, the terminal. And I had yeah. just seen it maybe a few months before. And I go, yeah. He goes, I wrote that. Holy goes, shit. <laughs> I go, that's a Spielberg movie. He goes, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> wow, man. So it's like, okay, you're writing, writing movies for Steven Spielberg. Uh -huh. Lovely. So, of course, we we had a really killer weekend. Um, and, you know, during that weekend, he took me to his his sort of his mentor's mm -hmm. uh, apartment or, or not apartment, but his his beautiful layout in Malibu Beach. Yeah. So I'm sitting on the, at this at this place in Malibu Beach <laughs> on the beach. And, and it's uh I, I eventually realize I find out that it's the, this guy's name was well, I've only introduced to him as Steve, but I didn't realize who that exactly that was. Right. But it was Steve Salian, okay. who was uh, in Schindler's List. Yeah. Wow, okay. Man. We're talking about a se really serious mm -hmm. Hollywood uh, screenwriting producer director kind of guy, right? right. And they, they, for whatever reason, um, Steve and Sasha got up from the from the from where we were sitting outside, and his wife was washing the, their dog. Uh, Steve's Steve's wife was washing the dog, uh -huh. and they take off to go make coffee and tea in in the house. Well, they have this conversation, and of course, Steve, as as Sasha told me afterwards, Steve goes. Who the hell did you bring to my house? <laughs> <laughs> so he goes, oh, that's lips from the band Anvil. And he goes, what, what the hell's that? And he's yeah. going, it's, it's a, it's a band that started in the seventies and they're still at it. And this guy still believes he's going to be a rock star. And he's mm. going, dude, <laughs> get out your camera and get out your book. You should do a documentary on these guys. Damn. No one could do that better than you, man. And he, and that of course, yeah. set Sasha into uh, this, wow. I, you know, he started really thinking about it. Mm -hmm. And of course I'm completely oblivious, oblivious to this. I'm no, no right. clue that this is where it's going. Yeah. And, at all. And, and did, so did you have any idea that this was going to be like, when you guys started no, doing that, 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 like, Got about about a week or two after I got home from LA, Sasha calls me. I'm coming into Toronto. I need to talk to you. Come pick me up mm -hmm. at the airport, and and take me to my uncle Marty's. And Uncle Marty's was, I don't know, maybe a mile away from my house. <laughs> okay. So it's like, oh, sure, no problem. Right. <laughs> so I come get him, and he get takes me over to Uncle Marty's, who he was away on vacation. Mm -hmm. And Sasha was just staying there. He sits me down in the, the living room and he says, I'm going to make a documentary about Anvil. Hmm. And I, I, I started crying. Oh man. Yeah. Because, uh, I realized immediately what I could, it, it was like, I, I saw all of it. Yeah. It, you know, like in, in my mind's eye, I saw all of it. The potential I, I realized, that what this could do for, for yeah, your no, band. I, and, it was more than, yeah. it was much more than potential yeah. from, from my perspective, because we're not talking about some bozo with a, with a video camera. Yeah. We're talking about somebody, we're talking about real Hollywood here. Okay? Yeah, absolutely. I, because I realized this guy worked with Spielberg. Look the fuck out, okay? <laughs> right. I knew it's gotta. This has gotta be good. It's gonna be. It's gonna be better than good. It's like I envisioned red carpets and re immediately, and that's why I was bawling my eyes out. And yeah. Sasha's looking at me like I'm out of my mind. <laughs> he goes, "Do you know how far and what we have to do to make this work? What are you? Where are right. you? What are you thinking?" And and I'm like, "You just don't get it. You will. You will." And I'm yeah making all the calls on it right away right because from my perspective we had the history mm -hmm. everything you know, had lined like up we Every had a history of of it and it's not about failure but we had it's about it's about a grueling journey absolutely yeah 
and that and and, and and the documentary shows that so well like the you know you said it's not about failure and it's not because there was no failure there because you never stopped man that was no failure failure is quitting failure right. is giving up failure is not putting out albums yeah but we, we just put out our 12th album we're going to make our 13th right <laughs> That's not failure sorry yeah, right my perspective nowhere near it but nope. it, right. but the, the history the history of those 12 albums and the and the 25 or, or the 30 years that, that mm -hmm. we ex existed it need needed to be substantiated right it needed validation it needed to be told man so many people had just and never it to, it, and, and and from it, it, and it's like all that work and everything and i it's it's not the band's I, from my, from my thoughts and the way that I've always gone mm -hmm. through this, it's not the band. It's how you're doing business and who you're doing business with right. In, right. In, in the, in the music industry. It's not, it's not about your talent. You can have talent all day. As, yeah. All day long. Yeah. And lots do. And, and it's yeah. it, it, that it's, it's, that's only, you know, 10% of the picture. Right. You need everything else in place to to make any kind of dent. You do. Well, and I would also and I would also argue that we, that lived it, we lived it in our earlier days where we got yeah. close, but but it didn't happen. But we knew why. Yeah. So you, you know the reasons why, and and you you're going. They're not they're not real. It's well, not, and, and lips, you're a tenacious it's not person, funny, man. <laughs> like sure. we 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 watch this documentary, we listen to you now, and man, like not everyone has that that energy to continue doing that so that that is an enviable trait for, for sure. sure man definitely um do you yeah, think but it's, you know what it's it's uh, uh, to be really i did it exactly the way i wanted to yeah and what i wanted to do uh -huh. i never i never had to bend or or or, or uh, customize the band to do what it it, it did Mm -hmm. I never had to even make demo tapes. It was easy to get record deals on a constant basis. And we had record deals. Uh, we had one record deal that, that put out like close to seven albums. Right. So it was ne never an issue about putting out records or being, being valid enough to, to right. get a record deal. Sure. You didn't even need a demo. They just give you the record deal, do it and send it to me when it's finished. Right. And they give you the money. Right. It, right. It, it, it's not even about that. It's, so, uh, I mean, that's, that in itself is a hundred percent success yeah. from a musician's point of view, you get to write your own songs and be original mm -hmm. and get, get them out to the public, whether they go bigger or not is it's not, that's not the issue. The guy who writes all the songs and gets them out the most <laughs> is the winner. Sure. It's not yeah. the guy who got the the mansion and the big and the and the beautiful cars and all the the chicks. Okay. Right. That's not <laughs> yeah. Do you? And I never looked at it like it was. Yeah. And it, it's it, it's interesting. Never had to never had to uh, make pop songs or be on and right. because metal music or what what I envisioned or what I thought metal was. Mm -hmm. It's a kind of music that's somewhat. Uh, revolting <laughs> right sure that's what we love it's about not, it <laughs> it's supposed to be un, it's supposed to be unaccessible right it's supposed to, it's it, not for everyone no it's, it's, it's not it, it, and and if it if it turns that way people go they sold out right it's the first thing that, that people say when when and, when a band right would would cross over and get a song on the radio they sold out mm -hmm. well i never wanted to do that no, nope. and I never wanted to be an arena band. Yep, and I and I still don't, and I still prefer to play clubs yeah. until the day I die. <laughs> so, all that I wanted to do was make a living doing it, which yeah. wasn't easy. Yeah, right. you didn't have, want to have it's to work the other jobs along with it. Yeah, do you think that after the uh, the the documentary, so you guys had your your you know you guys got real close we just missed our 20th album and we just right. did it we, we we played over 150 shows last year wow man that's so great do you think do you that's think a, that that the that documentary helped at all pardon me oh i was just i was just asking do you think that the that sasha's documentary coming out helped to kind of amplify what you guys were already doing and and bring some oh, it, it brought it, it well the thing is what what 
so yeah i mean it, it changed everything yeah so the, the the rise wasn't no instant from the from from the movie it was all it was all a build-up mm -hmm. i mean i was so i was so positive about it all that i i initially thought that it was automatically going to get put at sundance <laughs> right. just as an example yeah and, and sasha goes okay we're gonna we're gonna uh we're gonna go you know we're gonna give the movie to the guys at sundance i go what do you mean they haven't seen it yet <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah come, you you, you're you're we're a metalhead musician that doesn't know anything about the, the uh, film industry yeah <laughs> Man, we're gonna see if we can get in the festival i go right what do you mean it wasn't the shoe in i thought you got a connections i thought it was already i thought it was all destined to go there <laughs> right and he goes oh no you gotta we gotta it's gotta get by a whole uh we got work to do yet <laughs> Yeah, we got to yeah. send it in and see if they like it. And I'm going, oh, no, man, it can't <laughs> be, it can't be. Well, they sent it in and they were overwhelmed. Yeah. The Sundance people were overwhelmed. Yeah. And, of course, it, it, it was like having a shoe in. It, it got accepted right away yeah. and was immediately the 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 uh, the favorite of, of, of the festival mm -hmm. of that year. And it was it was incredible, uh, incredible rise from from that point on and then right and as it went it just got more and more as it rolled out right but not without a lot of hard work oh and yeah promotion for sure you can you, you can't i didn't know what promotion meant up until that point because <laughs> I, I yeah. tell you i was those are things you don't know unless people are telling you Did yeah well you... they sent us out on what we called the popcorn tour popcorn and what we, tour what they were doing is it, yeah well, that's what we called it but the anvil experience whatever you want to call it oh yeah yeah, yeah. We, were, we were playing in movie theaters dude right. that's so fucking cool i would have loved to have been oh man <laughs> one of those did you well, have... yeah because imagine you're sitting there watching a movie with with these characters that you've grown Right. You've right. grown a, 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 a love for. Absolutely. And then all of a sudden the theater lights come on and the guy's standing there in person <laughs> playing March of the Crabs right in your face. <laughs> <laughs> the place where it went berserk. It was, yeah. it was one of the most unbelievable. We did this in London. We did this. Anyway, so eventually now he finally gets a deal. He mm. finally gets a deal and they put on the they put on the the, um, the the debut at the Egyptian Theater in in L.A. Mm -hmm. Well, we do the we do the we do the good old Anvil experience, and um, and I take a look out in the crowd, and I, and it's like filled with movie stars, rock stars. Oh shit, this is, man! This is fucked up, man. <laughs> like, holy shit. That's the best so way to of, describe that. Yeah. The movie theater afterwards. And there's Dustin Hoffman oh. crying his eyes out, hugging Sasha. Wow. Because he did not realize that the kid that he met. It all late, comes full kid, circle, man. Is <laughs> wow. the guy that did this movie. That's so okay? awesome. And he's just flipping out, okay? I mean, that, how do you do, how do you put this shit together man right. you don't like it's just, you don't it's got to it, be it, natural it's got to be it's got to it, be it, organic it's, it's just, yeah and that's these are the kind of things that happened you know yeah um one of sasha's best friends was the uh the brother of the prime minister of england's uh his sister was married to the the prime minister of, <laughs> of england wow so, so he, it ends up that when we did the London Film Festival, mm -hmm. she came to, she came to the movie. Damn. And here I am standing beside the prime minister's, prime minister's <laughs> wife going, come on, man, give him the devil horns. Yeah. Right? <laughs> You're out of your fucking mind. I ain't doing that. <laughs> oh, that's funny. So did you have, after... After all of the movie, uh, the documentary was complete, we kind of get a sense of all the positive things that could have happened from that. Did you experience any negative things that happened? Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, man. Can of you elaborate course. on that? There are people, uh, uh, there, 
particularly from musicians aspiring and being extraordinarily jealous. Mm. Wow. Really ugly. And metal people, metal people in general can be really, really, really nasty. Wow. That's surprising to me that you got that kind of backlash from, from that community. Yeah, it is surprising. Yeah. But, but they vote for the underdog. This was us rising out of the underground. Right. Right. And the metal community doesn't want that. That's like having a hit. It's like, it's it's like selling up. Okay. 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 I gotcha. You were becoming mainstream. They they suck. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Yeah. So, but but the, the real truth is, if you don't have that, you haven't ever made it. Good point. Right. So you got to have haters. If you don't have haters, you, you then there were that you haven't you haven't struck it you haven't struck it big enough. So the four of us sitting that, that's here That's what the truth is. The four of us sitting here are all musicians and I think every I can speak for all of us when we watch the documentary uh to to us it's inspiring and i imagine mm-hmm. even to non-musicians it would be just the same you're so positive uh and and by the end of the movie that final scene that that the final show i think everybody is rooting i've every time i watch it i'm pacing in my living room like <laughs> i can't wait for you to get out on the stage and see how many people are there and uh that was a phenomenon and, so and cool. even the way that that came to be, there were so many peculiar instances where, like Dustin Hoffman, like that, mm-hmm. but with mm-hmm. other things. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, like it, it just where it, it, the, the future was, you knew the, that it was, that it was going to happen. It, there's a chemistry there. So, you the- know, there was, first of all, the, the, the idea, um, in the first 10 minutes, you see the backstory, mm-hmm. the right. history, and then the rest is all in real time without scripts, without any idea where it's going to go or how it's going to go. How does it be, get become just, that like, fucking cool? Like, everything so man. fast <laughs> without, you know, how, how, how does it, how does a story like that write itself? I mean, that's fucking crazy. To me, that yeah, seems like did. something that it it's nuts. Yeah, it's cra- It is crazy. Yeah, like how the hell is that? <laughs> I, you know, I've watched. We're, we're talk- we, and he goes. Sasha calls me up at one point, and he goes, "Man, we need, we need, we need uh, uh, you to play in Japan again." Mm-hmm. I go, "Dude, I haven't been there in 25, 25 years. <laughs> how am I going to get a gig in Japan?" He goes, "I don't know, but you got to find some way." Anyway, so we're playing some gig here in Toronto. Mm-hmm. And this friend of mine comes to the gig, and he, at the end of the gig, they're moving the gear, and he drops my amp. Mm. He dropped one of my Fender Twins, and now, <laughs> now it's now. And I went, of course, ballistic, and he felt so bad. Uh-huh. He paid for all the repairs, but he's it, it left a huge imprint on the guy. The guy goes to Japan, mm. this friend of mine, mm-hmm. to go see the band Loudness, and he's friends with these guys. Well, the promoters <laughs> there. For, for these shows, it was creative man promoter. And the, the guy goes up to the guy, you guys should get Anvil, man. And the guy goes, you've got a way of getting Anvil? He goes, yeah, I got, I got Lips's email, his phone number, whatever. And the <laughs> guy goes, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm interested. Wow. Unknown to me. Now, Sasha made this call. Listen, we got to do this in the middle of October of, mm-hmm. of, of, of this year because I need to be editing and this at this point mm-hmm. these are the closing this is going to be the closing I'm I'm trying to build a closing for the, for the movie and right. he says I need I need you to go to Japan the phone rings and it's like Japanese guys so <laughs> <laughs> <What? laughs> Oh man that's awesome okay, like how do you like I'm sorry man that it's just like you can't you can't make a movie no. with a plan and expect it to work. You have to make a movie without a plan and let it unfold. Then it will work. Yeah. But well, especially, especially when things keep, keep, you know, and not to take anything away from the hard work that you've put in, because, you know, 
obviously you've put in a lot of hard work uh, to keep this. Well, it's not just the it history. It's yeah. It's the, it's the make. It's the actual making of the movie. How they right. do this, right? You know, I mean, there were such weird things that happened. Um, they're filming stuff that isn't in the movie, but I can tell you, I can explain. There was this. Um, there was this. There's this painting. I'll show you the painting. Okay. It's actually, sitting here. Uh, where is it? I gotta find it. It's right up. You see this painting? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Anyway, that's the White Cliffs of Dover. It's my it was my favorite painting. Okay. At my parents' place. Okay. Yep. And this was on my parents' wall. And they're filming me at my parents' place, and and I go, this is my favorite painting, and they're filming it, and I go, it says eighteen something on the back, and I took the painting off the wall to show the photographer, mm -hmm. and the nail fell out. Oh shit! On the wall. Mm -hmm. And I heard ping, 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 ping. I'm going, okay, I got to put the nail back. I went looking for the nail, can't find it. <laughs> Cannot find it anywhere. Like, and meanwhile, it's a wood floor. <laughs> like, where did it go? Right. <laughs> it must have fallen into the wall. I don't know. To this day, I don't know. <laughs> in, any case, in any case, it, it forced me to take my father's toolkit out and put a nail in the wall. Well, mm -hmm. this... Right, right away, I got this overwhelming shiver, something's up. Hmm. Like, I shouldn't have touched the painting, or it's an omen, something's up. Right. So I get the nail, and I put it back in, hang the, fill the, it back up. And I guess about three weeks later, we get we get a, I've been, uh, this is during the period of time that we made arrangements to go to Chris Tangerides, and we're going to go record uh -huh. in England. But we were supposed to go to London. We yeah. have no clue that anyway, what ended up ended up happening, Chris moved Chris Tangerides moved from London to this place called Kingsdown. Mm. Deal. It, 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 it's it's a small town uh outside of London. Mm -hmm. So we get to we get to, to London and we take the we get on the train and it takes us out to this this town deal, right? Mm-hmm. And we call a cab to take us to where we're going to be staying, which was some kind of scout camp okay. place. <laughs> like, a, but it has cottages, these really, really pointy cottages. And yeah. anyway, we, we we go up this big hill and we get to this place and we we've, we're all settled in and um. I'm sitting having a cup of tea and my bass play the bass player at the time comes back in and he goes, Look at my camera. Look at this. And I look at his camera and it's a virtu virtually the painting. Holy shit. Wow. I go, where did you get that picture? He goes, Look out your back window. No fucking <laughs> no way. way, dude. I look out the back window and it's over the English channel, man. And I go on, what, what the what? <laughs> oh, so that's wild. Living man. in the painting. Like what? <laughs> that is so crazy. Well, so as they're filming us, and of course the same photographers with us, and we're walking along the beach in Kings down there, and in and, and he he taps me on the shoulder, he goes, Hey lips, watch where you're walking. I go, why do you say that? He goes, you might step on that nail. Oh, fuck. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's crazy. That, that... Just some moments you're going, what? How does this happen? Yeah. So I, I... And was just during the creation of the movie that these weird connections are going on, you're going, I, I don't get it. Yeah, and but you know, even even we were were watching the film and and there was a lot of times where we we were going. It's this is almost too crazy to be real, you know. Like we're, we're going, is this is this even real life? We question. There was a time where we actually texted each other and questioned, like, like, is this a real story? Is Anvil a real band? <laughs> and Mark's going, yep, oh, yep. Stories about that. Hey, yeah, we, we went we went to a, a film festival in Galway. And a lady comes up to us, <laughs> comes up to Rob and I, and she goes, you guys are actors. And I'm going, no, we're not. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're not. Going to show 
goes, here, look at my passport. He goes, oh, she so can, can get fake documents. <laughs> okay. I don't know how else to, to, to tell you. He's got all fake documents. Right. Her name isn't really Rob Reiner. Right. <laughs> oh. going, but it's, look, it's a Canadian passport. What are you saying? No, you know, guys aren't real. It's not a real story. <laughs> were, were the similarities between your film and This Is Spinal Tap coincidental or were they or was that intentional no i think i think sasha did that i think that was that was the that was a nod part of the angle yeah you know they even had they even had a a, but but not completely on purpose i think that yeah what really spurred it was the moment that chris tangerides had a a, a, (laughs) a, like some kind of uh, piece of equipment that went to 11. Yep. <laughs> yep. Both and Abby and I talked movie. about that. Yeah. yeah. I think that, yeah. yeah. Got, like, let's connect it. Yeah. Somehow, and, why, and why not? Why not? Right. Like that, there was a lot of, yeah, that's what, that's what, that's what, and, and you've got the, the idea that the drummer's name is the same as the director's <laughs> name of spinal. We, we spoke about that yep. too. That's, that's, that's really cool. <laughs> that, that, there's something that the coincidence is it a coincidence or is it a meant to be? You got to. Yeah, that's good. A that's good about, way to look at about it. About the animal movie, it's like no wonder people didn't think it was real. Right. Well, yeah. I've, I've watched so many music documentaries, and it's all that follows the same formula of the rise to success, and then the drugs, and then coming back from that. And uh, I was I was around in the eighties when you guys were prominent and so when the movie came out i was excited to watch it and uh to see what it was about assuming it was going to be your typical recipe for a documentary and it basically after the introductions are complete and you start talking about meatloaf and shepherd's pie i'm like what (laughs) is this this so from shepherd's pie all the way through the rest of the documentary yeah you had me because it's 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 not the normal recipe and we get a finally get a chance to really look mm-hmm. into behind the scenes and what happens with the band and the struggles of being a musician. And, and it isn't, it isn't, and it isn't being told in a retrospect. It's being told it's unfolding while right it's happening. Exactly. Well, and it's still happening lips. I mean, you get that's it's 15 years after the release of that documentary. And you just told me when you emailed me, you said, sorry for, for taking so long because we were out playing. You guys are still making records. You guys are still playing. How do you guys, oh, yeah. you know, it's more, more than ever. Everybody says, Hey man, you're, your heyday. No, our heyday was after the movie. We're right. still living. That's awesome. Yeah. Do you, um, you know, I don't think people really come to realize it. I hope things got better. No kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We haven't stopped touring. I, I haven't had a day off, a, a real day off in 15 years. Man. Yeah. Wow. And do you love that? To, Is that what go to choice children's catering to make money? Yeah. I make money strictly from Anvil. Oh, I fucking love hearing that, that's man. So great. That that I, well, I love hearing that. It is. Like, I I achieved what I call my dream. My dreams came true. I am I am a very content and very very happy human being on on that level. You I, have you I have everything the way I wanted. I never had to sell out. I never had to do the things that other musicians have to do. And I don't have to play arenas and I don't have to play three hour sets and never get a night off. Yeah, man. You have no idea how happy you just made a small group of people in, in Omaha, Nebraska. You were, we're all sitting here going, this is exactly what we were hoping would happen when we talked to lips. Like I would hate to see you like, down on your luck and not to say that there's probably never struggles because i'm sure oh, it, know, it's man. life it's we just we just finished our 20th album ah oh, i love that so much man um <laughs> do you what what's the hardest part about keeping going now keeping your health okay yeah so so is you that, know i'm 67 so right. it's not it's not 27 so that Although uh, I've got the energy of a 27 year old, I, I, my lower back does not. Right. So I, I have, I have a question. And in, fact, and in fact, just in recent, in recent times, I've got, I've got, you know, arterial, or, 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 you know, I got a fibrillation and shit okay. like that. I got problems with my heart, but yeah. that can, that are rectified by taking pills and eventually get a procedure to fix it. But, 
Yeah. And it's not an operation. It's just a procedure. Sure. But it's health. Yeah. But health becomes, you, I think that becomes everybody's. Yeah, everybody's for sure. And you, once you get over 60. You can't actually, keep doing. Once you get over 50. Right. You can't keep doing what you guys are doing or anything in the world, no matter what your profession is, if you're not keeping your health. You know, one thing that I wonder, uh, Lips, if it, if it might help or not, is there any thought about going back to the bondage harness and, and fishnets? No, and, no, no. Oh, come <laughs> on, man. <laughs> oh, man. That, like, I've been asked that before, and it's like, oh, it's so, it's so wrong in today's day and age. It's just... Completely. Is it though, man? Come on. <laughs> oh, absolutely. You you can't get well. Why aren't why don't they show Archie Bunker on TV anymore? <laughs> well, right? I suppose you're right. Yeah, um, it's the same. It's the same thing. You you just yeah you can't do that. You know that we had a a, a video for the song Mad Dog. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you're familiar with the song, but mm-hmm. it it actually made it onto MTV yep. in the mid '80s, right? In around eighty eighty seven, actually. Well, it was a great, great video. It was one of the first video. It was the very first video that ever had pulled black and white and just had red mm. or just green or. Yeah. Anyway, yep. one of those, one of those kind of interesting videos. And sure. it, I, 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 when I was younger, I had gone to uh, taking c- cinematography in school and I came up with this. I came up with the whole storyboard for the song Mad Dog that I was, mm-hmm. the song was going to start out in black and white and she's going to, this girl's going to go to a pet shop and she's going to buy, which was my dog at the time of an <laughs> English bulldog, yep. take it to the park, kiss it. And it turns into lips. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah. And, he's her, and the other guys and the other three guys in the band become dog, dog catchers. <laughs> So in, in any case, what ended up happening, it got banned from MTV yeah. oh. because it depicted stalking. Oh, wow. Can you fuck it? Like, I'm <laughs> yeah, sorry. See, I, I, no, that, that's, like, that's kind of fucked the whole up. Thing yeah. is just, just tongue in cheek. Yeah. Give me a break. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I suppose. I, I, I suppose playing your flying V it, with a vibrating dildo might not do the same as it did back in the seventies, right? Or the eighties. <laughs> Well, you know what? That that's that has <laughs> is a very important part of 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 what I do. Yeah. What the the live presentation is, but it's not. Yeah. It, because I'm not using it on a blow up doll, and because I'm right. not demeaning women or anything like that, I'm, right. I'm able to get away with that. Yeah. Right, in today's world. It's it's show business, man. I mean, if if Guar can go out there yeah, with it, it's a show, and I, yeah. I mean, it's and the way that I'm doing it is all musical. I'm yeah. I'm playing bottleneck with it. I'm I'm yep. doing uh, tap ons like Eddie Van Halen, yeah, or whatever. Yeah, I'm I'm using it as uh, 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 as a, as part of the mu- a musical. It's not just hey, look at what I got. Right. <laughs> it's not just that. Right. It has use and has shape and has form and has everything about it and individuality yeah and individuality is ultimately important yeah and you gotta have it musically you gotta have it performance with the show yeah you, you gotta have it with your look yep you gotta have it, it's got to be thoroughly unique and one of a kind mm-hmm. Has to be. and if you're not you're never getting anywhere yeah absolutely and that's been, that's been my outlook since day one anyway so no, it's not it, it, the the whole idea of removing the vibrator from the live performance is not going to happen. I I yeah, did it for stick. a while. Yeah, yeah, the stick yeah. or stick, whatever. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting. It's interesting because there was a point, I guess, in the in the late in the in the mid nineties, we we did a bit of a venture down into the states, and we. We were playing at a club, I think in Detroit, mm-hmm. could have been Detroit. And the agent came backstage and he goes, I'm never going to book your band again if you <laughs> use that vibrator. I said, well. And I'm going, what? He goes, we had three patrons coming back to the door saying they want their money back. <laughs> okay. Give it back and tell them to fuck off, I guess. <laughs> 
I, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna I'm, change. I'm gonna I'm gonna lose my identity because three three of your patrons yeah. have got nothing better to do than complain about something stupid are, yeah. are gonna say something. Right. Anyway, so well, but but the, the way the guy put it to me, he says, even if you have one person, it means there's thousands that don't aren't aren't gonna appreciate that. Well, what about all the other people standing in the front row moshing and head banging? Well, that doesn't matter. You <laughs> see, we was just saying, yeah, it, it's negativity. Let's go for negativity. Right. You know, let, let's yeah. go for for naysayers. Let's go for it, it's it's what uh, comes with being yeah. a musician. Yeah, and I'm sorry, sir. I was under the impression this was a metal show. I thought I could do <laughs> cool shit like this and get away with it. And and who cares who who it offends because we're here to, yeah, to have a good time. Meanwhile, Angus yeah. Young can pull his pants down on stage and, and hang right. the moon, but right. if, if I pull out a vibrator, that's completely unacceptable. Right, yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> Yep. One thing, you know, we're, we're, we're running right at about an hour, so we'll, we'll kind of try to wrap it up just a little bit. But um, one thing I do want to point out uh, that we really appreciated about the documentary and seeing this and then even just talking to you tonight. So the best part of any band or any podcast or business or whatever it may be um, is getting to spend time with your friends and cultivating those relationships with all kinds of different people. You've talked about all the people that you've, you've uh, interacted with and we get to see a lot of the closeness between, especially between you and Rob and you, know, you guys grew up together. You're, you know, your brothers essentially, right. And the, the good, yeah. the bad, the fights, the, the, the friendship and all that. Um, you know, I just wanted to speak to how, how cool that is and how, how great it is to see you guys still doing that together. You know, I was hope I did reach out to both you and Rob. I was hoping that maybe he'd jump on, but, um, because I'm a drummer and I'm super impressed by his drumming, <laughs> not to say that you don't shred your flying V there, but uh, being a drummer, you know, I'm going, man, that guy's, I, I, I put him up against any of them. I mean, yeah. I mean, Mark and I talked about that yeah. last time. Um, so you, you know, that relationship, but there was a couple other relationships, you know, you just mentioned your song, Mad Dog. Is that happened to be named after your friend, Mad Dog by chance? Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. What, uh, and how are the song, Cut, Sorry Cut to Loose, steal your... which was named, which was also named after one of the other, the other guy, whatever, um, whatever became of those And what two. eventually, what eventually happened on the last, on, um, I guess, our last album, uh, we used both of Sasha's. Uh, Sasha ended up with two nicknames: mm -hmm. Teabag and and Gomez. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and what what happened was, uh, I'd written an instrumental, and I was just going to call it Teabag. <laughs> so when we got to the studio, we finished Teabag, and uh, we the, the the producer goes. Okay, man, this is amazing. Let's put horns on it. I go, what? Horns. You did that already. <laughs> yep. Problems ago. I don't want to do that again. He goes, no, this one's got to have horns. It's got to. And I go, I don't want to do it. I don't. I got putting up a big fuss. And he goes, I'll tell you what. I'll make you a deal. Okay, I'll pay for the. I'll pay half for the guys to do it. You know, you have to hire, mm -hmm. hire horn players. Yep. And and if we don't do it, we don't pay anything. Well, mm. I can't, can't really lose, can I? Right. <laughs> I don't like it. We don't use it, and it didn't cost anything. So right. what the hell? We've got nothing to lose. Yep. So what what happened was, of course, they sent they sent the the masters over to to the another studio where there's guys who play horns, mm -hmm. and they they created a whole track, <laughs> and then they added it to to our our song. I. The, the producer calls me in and he goes, have a listen. And when I listen back, I started flipping out. I go, wow, okay, we're <laughs> going to use it. Oh, that's but awesome. you know what? But we're going to use both of them, mm. both versions. So we called one tea bag and one Gomez. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> of course, now the, uh, Sasha's nickname, we called him tea bag because he's English, <laughs> right? right? He's from Britain. All right. they do is drink tea all day long. Right? <laughs> it's tea time. It's tea time. It's tea, especially when we were working with Chris Tangaridis. Yeah, that's every ten minutes he's making a cup of tea. So, <laughs> it, <laughs> um, so we we nicknamed Sasha Teabag, but the name Gomez happened sometime after the 
after the uh, after the spirit awards mm. because we start to win he Sasha was of course that's his accolades winning awards he's going to be the one with them on a, on his wall and on his on his desktop so he became eccentric about it he goes like i and he starts going i got a, i got the nicest train set on, on the block mm-hmm. and all the other kids want to see it <laughs> <laughs> so he just went train set you're Gomez Adams. <laughs> the I, Adams wondered, family. I wondered if it so was going to come from that. Yeah. So, so one of the things that I uh, took away from the show, I think that, that, that still intrigues me about rewatching the show is you two, you and Rob are the only two that I've ever known. Every, I think every musician has sat in a basement with his 15 year old best friend and said, we're going to rock until we die, <laughs> you know, and nobody does it. And I love the fact that you've been able to do that all these years with your best friend. Mm-hmm. And, uh, well, so did Paul McCartney. <laughs> true. That it's, it's you know, a, so it's, it's a small it's like group. <laughs> there's lots of examples of it, but you're going to find it. You're going to find it more in the, in the, in the successful bands. But having said that, to Rob and I, Anvil has been a success. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, it would have broken up. Right. Yep. We yep. always had record deals. We always had a, something to look forward to. Whether whether people want to give us the accolades of those things, right. that's a whole other issue. Hey, man, you didn't make a million bucks, so you didn't make it. Hey, dude, <laughs> go try and make 12 albums in a row. Right. right. See, what, see what you can do that. You'd be lucky to get one out, never mm-hmm. mind 12. Right. Right. <laughs> right. Anyway, so... This is the thing. It's it. It was successful enough to keep the friendship alive. That's for certain. Yeah, that's really cool, man. We might have we might have opposing ideas, but they're usually over. They're they're usually just the direction to take mm-hmm. to get to the same destination. Right. Well, that's what brothers do, well, right? The same goal. It's just your your approach might be different, right. it, so right. that's where the, that's where the falling out goes. Yeah, so and and, not- and every every good friendship, every good brotherhood, every you know siblinghood, I should say, not just brothers, but you know the you're gonna have some you know, disagreements. Women, men and women, sure. We got a family. Let's we're gonna be successful raising a family. Yep. You do it together and you both have this different methods of raising the kids, but it's to get to the same, same goal. goal. Yep. Yep, yeah. absolutely. Okay, so question for you. We are sitting in a basement in Omaha, Nebraska. Can you speak to the song Nabbed in Nebraska? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know that you know that Oregon's right next door, right? <laughs> <laughs> Kinda, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so we we played some uh, a show in Oregon and mm-hmm. stuff, and of course we have lots of fans there that smoke pot. And mm-hmm. They loaded us up pretty large. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and, and it was, and, and and you know this is the irony. I I had quit cigarettes mm-hmm. at that time, and I had to quit pot. Mm. But I got this friend Bill saying hey man take some pot if you get that if you if you can maybe you'll smoke it so i said okay oh, whatever yeah. i'll take it i felt i felt like almost obligated to sure and i stuck it in my i stuck it in my pouch right in my in my fanny pack right <laughs> and we're driving along the highway just coming out of oregon entering into entering into nebraska and there's this big sign drug dogs on duty oh shit <laughs> so that, that's right oh shit so rob takes an exit right away mm-hmm. we get off start getting off the highway and i'm thinking fuck i'm gonna stash my pot so i pull <laughs> my pot out of the pot out of the thing put it on the dash because now i gotta take my fanny pack off uh-huh. undo my belt i want to stick it down my pants <laughs> well it's boiling boiling hot and the window is open and i put the pot on the on the dashboard and a big gust of wind comes and blows the pot out the window oh shit (laughs) this is as we're going up the ramp and there's a cop sitting Uh beside the ramp in a parking lot and and sees the bag 
Phoenix and plastic bag flying out the window, right? <laughs> Oh, that's funny, man. Okay, and I'm going, he couldn't have seen that, but he did. Yeah. And he booted it out of that parking lot, went and picked up the picked up what fell, what blew out the window, <laughs> yeah. and came driving after us. And as we're getting back onto the highway on the other ramp to go the other way, the <laughs> cops are behind us, the lights are going, we're going, oh, no. Got us. The cop, goes, the cop comes up to the window and he's holding my bag of weed and he's going, Drop something. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. I'm gonna give you two, I'm gonna give you two choices. If you don't admit that it's yours, you're gonna get obstruction of justice. And if you admit, admit it's yours, I'm gonna give you a fine. So you got a choice of two things. Mm. What are you gonna do? <laughs> Pay the fine. It's mine. Take the fine, yeah. And then I start explaining to the guy, dude, it flew out the window. It flew out the window. And he goes, uh -huh. I don't believe you. I don't believe you. And as he's saying that, all these papers come flying out and all around his head. Because <laughs> it's super windy, right? Yeah. Because we're in a flat. We're in, we're in Omaha. We're in Nebraska. Yep. Right? Yep. So it's like, oh, my God. Anyways. That's Well, so he funny. realized I was telling the truth. But then he goes, well, I'm charging you with possession. And I'm charging you with littering. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like Nebraska State Patrol. Yep. That's for sure. <laughs> Fundraiser. Well, that's awesome. And they were kind of laughing. They had a good laugh out of it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they, of course, they they caught everybody else with a little bit of pot, and every, they, you know, everybody got everybody got charged. Sure. Yeah. Cool. So they made a big king on us. <laughs> I'm sure. And of course, you just pay pay the fine, and it, it goes away, right? Right. Yeah. Yep. But the 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 inspiration for a song just I, I had to do it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's perfect. That that song material right there. All right, so lips. Before we go, I wonder if you would be interested in playing a short little game that we like to do on our show before we go. Sure. All right. So Bryce and I, uh, we like to go to like pub trivia pretty much every week, and uh, we started putting at the end of our shows a a little bit of hidden trivia about whatever we're talking about. So I put together like okay. three questions about Anvil. All right. Now, obviously you're going to have a, a leg up on the rest of the people in the room here, but we're all going to play. Um, and I was hoping just to see how well our crew does just for fun. And if they don't know it, then we'll see if you know it. If you don't know it, then I'll probably tell you what I pulled off of the internet. <laughs> does that sound all right? Okay. okay. Yeah. If I'm wrong on any of these, you correct us and we'll set the record straight. All right. Okay. Okay. So before you answer lips, uh, we're going to let Abby and Mark and, and Bryce over there, see if they, if they know the answer to this, what is the most played Anvil song on the band's Spotify page? Oh, I know this one. Tell me. Metal on metal. Absolutely. Correct. That's correct. Metal on metal. It's what's, gonna, what's number two? Correct. Any idea what number two is? Number two. Uh, I got the top three. So no Metal clue. on Metal was is 8,122,129 or 130 maybe on the way in when you guys drove in. Um, the second one is at, is at 6,688,166 pounds. Plays. So it's just over 6,666,666. But uh, it is March of the Crabs. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. And then Slip. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Like that. And then number three is Slip Kid. Slip Kid. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. That was uh, three, three million. I think that was, that was on Sons of Anarchy, if I remember. Yeah. Yeah. And that's right. Okay. And that, that's an interesting story too, how we ended up with that. <laughs> I'd love to hear it. If you still got, if you got more time. Yeah, no, uh, Katie Segal and Kurt Suter lived across the road from Sasha. No fucking way. <laughs> yeah, so one, one day I'm making a cup of tea in the <laughs> Sasha kitchen. And all of a sudden I hear, Hey, Sasha. And it's like, that voice sounds like Futurama lady. It's, yeah. <laughs> What? Katie like, Seagal. And I take a look and there's this lady with sunglasses on and a kerchief over her hair. And I'm looking really close and I could see got really high cheekbones. Mm -hmm. I'm going, I think it is her. Holy shit. <laughs> Must be. And, and then Sasha goes, hey, Katie, what's happening? And I go, 
it is her. Holy oh my God. Holy anyway, that's, that's awesome. She came over to get sugar or something. I forget what it was. It's like, Holy Christ. <laughs> anyway, we ended up, we ended up uh, going to her Christmas party and they ended up being kind of friend friendly with mm-hmm. us. And of course they saw some of the first edits mm. of the film. Of course, Kurt being a, a director and, and whatnot had yeah. a lot in common with Sasha. Sure. I mean, they're good friends. Right. Mm-hmm. And he's going, what do you think of this? It, it, you ask somebody like that because it's yeah. somebody who's got a really detail, an eye for detail. Yep. And they became fans before the movie was even done. That's cool. <laughs> That's so cool. So once the and once the movie and I of course I didn't know Sons of Anarchy from yeah from, from the Three Stooges at that point. No, what the hell? Yeah. What's that? I yeah. didn't even know what it was. And uh, Kurt says I'm going to have you on my on my TV thing, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, we did. We were in, in the second season, second second episode, mm. and we were gun runners. <laughs> oh <laughs> we, man. We got these, these bags of guns and shit, right? Oh, wait, so you and guys are actually in the show? Ron, Ron Perlman, you know, it's just so the characters of that, of, of all that, and with no clue as to what we're part of or what we're doing. Yeah, so not. L- Lips, you're saying you guys were actually in the show, like on the show, not just your music? Oh, yeah. Holy yeah, shit, so I didn't I, know that. That's <laughs> fucking awesome. Trivia question. Yeah. After we do the show, Kurt goes, okay, let's go one step further. I want you guys to do a version of of the Who song Slip Kid. Mm-hmm. He says, I don't want he says, I want a mixture of musicians. So yeah. if you don't mind, I'm gonna get this guy by the name of Frankie Perez yep. to sing. Mm-hmm. He said, I don't mind. I, I don't want to sing it. Yeah, no. Dude, that's fucking and, and so I cool. To sing, I'm in. <laughs> like, kind of, it's it's physical hard work. If you can get out of it, you do, right? Yeah, it's and not, you probably still got paid for it, and so that's cool. All right. Yeah, no, it's good enough for me. But Hell anyway, yeah. so I, I, we we figured out all the arrangement, went in and recorded all the stuff, and uh, yeah, we never met the singer, but he came in afterwards, yeah. and they edited edited him in and mm-hmm. all that. And when we heard the finished product, we're going, wow, that's, it's a cool that's song. Awesome. Yeah. It's a really cool song. Okay. We ready for question number two. Yep. All right. Question number two, Anvil's metal on metal was briefly played during the Sunday, November 14th, 2010 episode of what American animated sitcom. <laughs> I can't answer this question because I saw, you saw the earlier, answer. All right. So, Bryce, Abby? I don't know. You want to take a guess? He doesn't know either. TV animated series. Yep. 2010? Longest yeah. running TV animated series uh-huh. in history. The Simpsons? Yeah, that was it. The Simpsons. Yep. So in the episode Lisa Simpson, This Isn't Your Life, Metal on Metal plays during a scene while Bart is kite surfing in some mud on the playground and ends up splashing Nelson with a bunch of mud. So that was pretty fucking sweet. Lips, was, do you have any amazingly incredible stories about that? Well, no, I, I, it, it came as much of as, as a surprise. Um, yeah. I don't even know what to say about it. It's like, <laughs> and, and from what I understand, they didn't, they never had a band band's music on they that, don't, on that, those cartoons. They don't usually we, do that. Yeah. So we're only. Yeah. I'm I'm hoping you guys got some uh, kickback from that because uh, I don't think you. Oh can... no, we got paid. We got paid large. Okay, good. Obviously, good. <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, not not to mention that, but the Green Hornet as well. Oh, I didn't realize Green that. Hornet. That's awesome. Michelle Michelle Gondry, the director, loved the movie and yeah. had us. He was going to actually have us play in it, and we were filmed playing metal on metal in a in a in a bar. Uh, <laughs> packed a packed bar. Yeah. Um, and then the bar blows up, or the place goes <laughs> on fire. Yeah. They show the and, and anyway, it got all edited, and we didn't end up, and but they but what ended up happening is the footage that they filmed of us mm-hmm. was on a on a TV set during a conversation in the office. Oh. In the office of the club. I'm gonna have to rewatch that now. <laughs> That's really cool. All right, last question. 
And Lips, you should know this one, so we're going to have to just make sure that these guys get a chance first. But which of these albums was Anvil's only album to be released on Hypnotic Records? Ah, wow. <laughs> was it, and, uh, here's a hint, it was released in 1996. So was it worth the wait? Was it plugged in permanent? Was it absolutely no alternative? Or was it speed of sound? <laughs> I'm I don't just know you said the correct one. You don't, you don't know? What was the first What was the first one? Uh worth the wait. Oh, okay. Okay. I just I just I I, I yeah, go ahead. Well, I'm going to cheat and say it's worth the wait. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, that, that, that's what I was saying. <laughs> no. That's what it was. And what? it was not 96, it was 92. So okay, well then, then the what I had on on Wikipedia was wrong then because it says plugged in permanent was that, that doesn't surprise me. Okay, <laughs> all right. So plugged in permanent was not on hypnotic. Is, is that correct? Because uh, so what what it says is that worth the wait came out in ninety two on Maximum Records. That's right. Okay, and then plugged in permanent ninety six hypnotic records, and then hypnotic. after that, and then after that, uh, massacre all the way until you until no, uh, the hypnotic hypnotic was was a Canadian was a Canadian label. Okay, and massacre was our German label. Okay, yep. And you and, guys, and that was the one you guys stayed we, with for quite a while. The, that was the longest. That was the longest standing record deal was with with massacre. Yep, that was ninety seven to. Oh, we did plugged in permanent. We did, um, I guess after plugged in permanent. Absolutely no alternative. Speed, absolutely no alternative. Speed of sound. Yep. Uh, what came after speed of sound? Plenty of power. It's still okay. going strong. And back to basics. Yep. They all came out on massacre. Yep. As well as hypnotic. Oh, those were all. It was all on both of those. That's yeah, they're all good. hypnotic. Was our Canadian okay? Yeah. Okay. So, well, that was not an unfair question. Then, still a fun conversation, though. <laughs> yeah. All right, man. Well, hey, Lips. I hope you had fun, man. Um, I am so absolutely stoked that you decided to spend some time with us tonight. Um, I hope that you guys keep keep on rocking and um yeah, it's like, like i said man it's all it's all to do with health so. yeah <laughs> yeah you're a fucking rock star man you we know, love I'm you every and i'm here and I'm, i look at everything like it could end tomorrow and yeah. i better make the best of it that's it your positivity is contagious man i i really appreciate that I about you so thank you so much man um i have one final question for you um and what do we have to do to become card holding members of the Anvil Metal Pounders Union Local Six Six Six? All you have to do is get in touch with get in touch with Rob. Okay, he, he, <laughs> he fills them all out and sends them out. I love and that. I think that you can find that those links. Yeah. Um, or get in touch with Rob through the Anvil Facebook page. Cool. We don't. We have a we although we have a a, a fan website mm -hmm. it's a fan run website right you can probably find his email on there yeah okay that would be, that would be you got to use rob's email which is r-o-b-b -B dot r-e-i-n-e-r dot c-a okay awesome okay. so all our listeners out there if you want to be card holding members the anvil metal rob powers dot C dot C -A. Yeah. <laughs> okay Cool. Yahoo.ca. Yahoo.ca. Oh, yeah. You guys are Canadian, you eh? An email, you, you, you can get an Anvil Pounder card. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. Well, thank you again so much. I hope you had a good time. Um, any, any final words there, Mark? Hey, I just want to say thanks for inspiring uh, musicians across the world to just keep grinding and keep after it. Yeah, uh, well, we all need, we all need a kick in the ass. That's right. <laughs> hey, you gave it to us. Quitting gets you nowhere, man. It, it, <laughs> it, that's all I can say, man. Yeah. And everybody should realize that and understand that quitting gets you nowhere. I love that. Abby, final words. 
No, I'm no. speechless. I'm speechless. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot you were you were over there. You're just listening, enjoying I, the yeah, enjoying I the show. I was. It was so entertaining that I Good. didn't have to say anything. <laughs> Good. Well, I want to thank all of our listeners this evening for this ep- for tuning in to this episode of Documentary Insider. We have been Jeff Kalaski, Abby Necker, Mark Means, Bryce Necker over there here with Lips of Anvil. Uh, We hope you keep your minds open and be kind to each other and keep pounding metal. Goodbye, everybody. Have a wonderful night. This has been a wonderful birthday gift to me. It's my birthday today, by the way, Lips. So thank you for... Thanks, man. Thanks for for making my, my birthday special. So, all right. Good night, everybody. You guys can say bye, too. Goodbye. Bye. (laughs) 